Hello. In this second part of lecture nine, I will try to show you the application of a zener as a voltage regulator. Voltage regulator means it's a, um, it's a, it's a device or a chip that's used to maintain a constant voltage regardless of the variations of the input voltage delivered to it. And the simple voltage regulator is the one shown here. So you have a variable input. The voltage in this one is not really constant. It can go up and down a little bit, okay? And we want to use the zener to maintain a constant almost or ideally, ideally a constant or practically almost constant voltage across the output. So for example, what's going to happen here, say this zener voltage has a breakdown voltage of 5 volts. And this one here is 6 volts. Okay, so at this one goes to, as this one reaches 6 volts, then the zener will be in the breakdown region. Okay, then it will break down and then it will, it, because when it reaches breakdown in the ideal case, it can allow any current to go through it from the cathode to the anode. The current will be adjusted to maintain the zener voltage across that, so to maintain whatever voltage is desired. As we said, this may be 6 volts, this is 5 volts, then the output will be 5 volts. Now, if this one, say, goes to 8 volts, if this one goes to 8 volts, because this zener already is in the breakdown region, it will still keep the same 5 volts between the cathode and the anode, but it will simply allow sufficient current to go through such that the rest of the voltage is being absorbed by the resistor. So the output voltage, which can be used in a, in a, in a, in a voltage um, in a power supply or something like that, is really maintained as a constant value. In the reality, in the reality, we don't use the ideal model for the Zener diode. So we don't replace the Zener diode by um, uh, a battery like this one. Okay, we don't usually do that. Uh, the ideal case or the more accurate case is that the Zener diode is represented by its practical model. And the practical model represents the, is represented by the voltage VZ node, which is the intersection of the linear characteristics with the, with the horizontal axis, the V axis, and this is the dynamic impedance. So this is simply saying as the current going through the diode is increasing, the voltage across it, which is this voltage, will change a little bit. It's not going to be zero. So when there is a variation of the input voltage, there will be variation in the output voltage as well. But the, the role of the, of the Zener is to minimize this variation. And we, we define this term line regulation as the ratio in the change in the output voltage corresponding to the change in the input voltage. So the input voltage can go up from a minimum value to an, a maximum value. It can be oscillating with time or it can be any type of change in the value. This will result in a maximum value of the output and the minimum value of the output. The ratio between this, this delta change in the output voltage to the change in the input voltage is called the line regulation. And how do we calculate that? It's very simple. We assume first that we have here the minimum input voltage. If you have the minimum input voltage, we can simply assume that the Zener will be at the, just in the start of the breakdown region, so at the knee current. This is what we called before IZK. If you have the IZK flowing, then the voltage, the output voltage, which corresponds to the minimum input voltage, is equal to VZ node plus IZK multiplied by ZZ. Remember, IZK is a characteristic of the Zener. It's called the knee current. Okay? Now, if the input increases to its maximum value, this, of course, will result in more current flowing here. And if we assume that this current is designed, the component of the resistor is designed to, have, to make this one the maximum current that can flow in the Zener IZM, then the voltage across the Zener will go up a little bit, a little bit. Remember that this Zener is small. It's not that big. It's small resistance. So this variation in current will result in a small variation in the voltage across the Zener. So in that case, the output voltage will be equal to Vz node plus this maximum current multiplied by Zz. Okay, so now we know what is the maximum output, output voltage that corresponds to the maximum input voltage. We know the minimum output voltage that corresponds to the minimum input voltage, and then we can determine the regulation uh, ratio or the line regulation. 
Of course, in the ideal case, if I ignore this dynamic impedance, the voltage across the output is constant, is equal to the Zener test voltage or uh, whatever we call it, the operating point, and just the Zener will adjust the current going through it to make the resistance absorbs, absorb the variation happening in the input voltage. I discussed with you before the, the, the full wave uh, voltage regulator and it's shown here voltage rectifier. So you have here um, in the positive cycle current will go through this uh, diode and then it will come back through that diode to close the circuit. In the negative cycle when this terminal is more positive than this terminal current will flow in this diode and then it will come back through that diode D3 and then to close the circuit. And we agreed uh, when we started that that the output waveform will look something like this. So it's oscillating. But if I want to give this one, say, to a machine or to, uh, to a tablet, I have to get a DC voltage. And the way they do that is very simple. They say, okay, why don't we add a big capacitor in parallel with this voltage source? Okay, we can add a capacitor here in parallel. So what's going to be happening? As the voltage uh, in this part, say the voltage is increasing, the, di the capacitor will charge. And then when it reaches a peak, the capacitor will start to discharge, but because of its large value, it will discharge very slowly. It's actually discharging through the load resistor, charging very slowly. So the output waveform that will be created from this combination looks something like this. So in the beginning it looks something like that, and then it's charged a little bit, and then it's charged again, and then it's charged a little bit, and then it's charged again, and so on. Okay, so you can see, this now looks like a voltage I can supply to a regulator. So if I supply this voltage to a regulator who has this Zener voltage, then the output taken from that voltage regulator, which is the Zener voltage and the resistor, say, will be almost constant, and it's equal to this one. And these ripples, these ripples will be absorbed by the resistor of the regulator. So after I have this circuit, I can simply connect it here to a, to a voltage regulator. So I can even have here a voltage regulator, usually connect to ground. And between the output of the voltage regulator and ground, I'm going to be seeing here almost a constant voltage. Okay, so this is, and usually, as I said, zeners are regularly used in voltage regulators because they are... They, are, they, they, they have very little change in their voltage uh, uh, when the current, and they can simply allow lots of current to go through when they, ha they are in the breakdown region. So this is a diagram of a, of a full wave rectifier with the regulator I mentioned to you earlier. Uh, the diodes are charging the capacitor during the positive cycle, okay, the capacitor, or either the positive cycle charging this way, okay, or during the negative cycle, the capacitor is being charged that way. Okay, so the capacitor is charging. It can discharge a little bit through the voltage regulator, but does not really lose that much. So if you have here a resistor and uh, a zener in series and, uh, acting as a voltage regulator, they take this this voltage, which has small oscillations, not really significant oscillations, looks something like this depending, of course, on the value of the capacitor, and then gives you an almost constant output voltage. An almost constant output voltage. Okay? So uh, so this is this is the power of using these voltage regulators, and this is what we have probably inside many of the uh, power supplies uh, that we use to charge our tablets, our cell phones, and so on. Um, it's really a circuit like this one, and of course, adding capacitors all the time results in a smoother waveform, because the capacitor... Uh, does not allow the voltage across it to change suddenly. It smooths out your the, the performance of the circuit. Okay, let's take a look at this example. We have here a, a Zener uh, voltage, a Zener, Zener diode. Um, it has a breakdown voltage of 10 volts. This is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. This is 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. And I have 16 volts being applied to this circuit and you can see this 16 volts battery is trying to reverse bias it's actually reverse biasing the diode It's trying to push current in the uh, clockwise direction thus thus in the breakdown region or uh, or um, it's not it's not really in the forward region forward will be from the anode to the cathode this current is flowing from the cathode to the anode so for this one i would like to determine vr the voltage across the resistor the 1k 
VL the voltage across the load resistor RL and the IZ the current going through the Zener diode if the resistor RL is equal to 3 kilo ohm if RL is equal to 3 uh, sorry I will, actually I will do it for 1.2k first and then I will move to do it again for the 3 kilo ohm so um, in this in this example we can see that because of the polarity of this battery this battery is trying to push current in this direction, so it's really reverse biasing the diode. So this diode will be either in, in the off region, so it's not conducting, or it reached its breakdown region, and in that case, the voltage across it between the cathode and the anode will be equal to 10 volts. So it's either this or that. It's one of these two regions. I will first assume it's in the breakdown region, and then I will see whether my assumption is valid or not. So if it is in the breakdown region, the voltage between here and here across the zener is equal to 10 volts then i can get the current going through the resistor is equal to 10 volts divided by 1.2k i can get this current i can get the current flowing through this resistor here the 1k it's 16 minus 10 divided by 1k and then i know what is the zener current zener current is equal to this current minus this current so i can get all what's required using this assumption of breakdown region so i will first assume it's a big breakdown region so the voltage between here and here is 10 volts then the load current flowing through the load is equal to 10 volts divided by 1.2 1.2k because it's 1.2k and if you calculate that you get 8.33 milliamperes the current flowing from the 16 volts battery is equal to 16 minus 10 divided by 1k 16 minus 10 over 1 and because I remove the k the result will be in milliampere if you divide that you get 6 milliamperes so you have here 8.33 flowing this way 6 milliamperes flowing this way this means that the current I zener is equal to 6 minus 8.33 so it's equal to minus 2.33 so it's actually current flowing in the forward direction which is a contradiction because I assume that this died already in the breakdown region then the current must be flowing from the cathode to the anode so my assumption of breakdown region is not valid this diode is actually off and in that case if this diode is off then it does not any current allow any current to go through it then it's open circuit then this looks like a voltage divider VR uh, VR here is simply equal to 16 multiplied by 1 over 1 plus 1.2 VL is equal to 16 multiplied by 1.2 over 1.2 plus 1 the Zener current is equal to 0 because simply the diode is reverse biased then it's open circuit there is no Zener current so these are the calculations I mentioned earlier the diode must be in the off region I, it cannot be in the, in, the, in the forward region because simply because of the polarity of the battery so this is simply a voltage divider, VL 16, 1.2, 1.2 plus 1. You get that the load voltage is equal to 8.73 volts. The resistor, resistor voltage you can get as well through a voltage division, 16 by 1 over 1 plus 1.2. Or you can subtract from this 16, from the supply voltage, this 8.73. You should get exactly the same answer. It is 7.27. And in that case, the Zener current is 0. So the Zener really is operating somewhere here. It did not really reach the breakdown region yet. The voltage across it is 8.73 volts. Okay, somewhere here. Okay, and um, there, there's no current going through it. You can see it's horizontal axis. Once it reaches breakdown, it will allow some current to go through. And this current will be determined by the rest of the circuit. Okay, for the second part, I will assume that the load resistor 3K is not 1.2K, 3K. And then I will assume also that the diode is in the breakdown region. And if my assumption is not valid, then it's okay. Uh, I will have to assume it's in the off region. Uh, if, if you assume that 3K and the diode is in the breakdown region, then the current going through the load is equal to the Zener voltage divided by 3K. The Zener voltage is equal to 10 volts. Then you divide the 10 by 3K, you get 3.33 milliamperes. The current going through the resistor, the 1K resistor, remember that the, the, the Zener is already in the breakdown. And this is, so the current going through in this case, I'm repeating actually, actually the same calculations did earlier. 
16 minus 10 over 1k okay so uh, I have the battery voltage minus the voltage divided by 1k and this will be 6 milliamperes so now what's happening I have this IR flowing in I have this Zener current flowing out I have I load flowing out I1 or this what I call here IR is equal to 6 milliamperes I have 6 milliamperes flowing in this one is 3.33 so this one is going to be equal to 2.67 so it's indeed positive so this means that the current in the Zener is flowing from the cathode to the anode meaning that the Zener is indeed in the breakdown region and then the output voltage across the load is maintained at 10 volts the, the, rest, the rest of the supply voltage appear, appears across the resistor so VR is equal to 6 volts and then the Zener current as, I, as I've shown here Zener current is equal to I1 minus IL or I call it here IR minus IL, it does not really matter uh, it's going to be equal to this uh, to, um, to uh, this 6 milliampere minus 3.33 is 2.67 milliampere so here in this second part my assumption of breakdown was valid and the diode indeed operates in the breakdown region